that's where the trouble is. And this the place I belongs away from. Don't you know, you can't run away from trouble. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 classic Hollywood movies with disturbing backstories. No. No, it was an accident. I didn't mean to kill anybody. For this list, we're looking at the backstage scandals and disturbing events that went into making some of the classics of the golden age of Hollywood. Which of these backstories shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Imitation of Life. The off-screen drama surrounding this 1959 melodrama may be just as heart-wrenching as anything that happened on screen. Personal turmoil and negative press made the shoot incredibly difficult for star Lana Turner. Imitation of Life was the Hollywood icon's first movie after the murder of her lover, reputed mobster Johnny Stampanato. I'll give him up. I'll never see him again. Oh, Mama, stop acting! Turner's torrid and abusive relationship with Stampanato ended when her daughter, Cheryl Crane, reportedly stabbed him in an act of justifiable homicide. And I saw this wound. I remember only barely hearing my daughter. Sobbing. Rumor and innuendo plagued the case, with many criticizing Turner's dramatic testimony at the inquest. Unfounded theories that she was the real murderer plagued the case to this day, but her daughter has always publicly taken responsibility for Stompanato's death. When one is sure responsible is. for someone's life ending, whether it's a justifiable act or not, uh, it stays with you. You have to learn to cope with it. You have to learn to accept it for what it was, and that took me many years to do that. Number 9. The Viking This little-known early sound film was panned when it was released in 1931, but it's known for holding at least two cinematic records. It is the first feature film to record sound and dialogue on location. You were mighty lucky to find this windbreak, eh? Hey? <laughs> uh. Going to be mighty tough on the buys tonight, but I'd been all right. It also holds the distinction of being the deadliest film production to date. While the production team was filming action scenes aboard the SS Viking, the ship became stuck in a thick patch of ice. While trying to free the vessel from the ice, the ship's crew accidentally detonated a series of explosives deep within the ship. The newspapers of the world, on March the 17th, blazoned the result. The explosion killed producer and co-director Varric Fursell, cinematographer Alexander Penrod, and over 20 others. The film begins with an introduction explaining the tragedy, and a tribute to Fursell and his crew. We hope and trust that you will find this, their picture, a worthy memorial. Number 8. Singing in the Rain Dancing in the rain <laughs> Musical comedy masterpiece Singing in the Rain was no picnic for anyone. Gene Kelly was reportedly sick with a 103 degree fever when he filmed the title number, but it was Debbie Reynolds who may have had the hardest time. Not a trained dancer, Reynolds faced abuse from Kelly, whose insults left the teenage actress in tears on more than one occasion. Stop! Uh, what could I do to you? I'm only a shadow. You keep away from me just because you're a big movie star! The Good Morning number alone took 15 hours to complete. By the end of the day, Reynolds' feet were bleeding. He shot it like 40 times, but he printed the first take. Really? <laughs> so, yeah. He was a very exacting man. Later in life, Reynolds would say that singing in the rain and childbirth were the two hardest things I ever had to do in my life. I'll do it, Don. I'll do it, but I never want to see you again, on or off the screen. Number 7. Gone with the Wind the Civil War epic has been a lightning rod for controversy since the publication of Margaret Mitchell's original novel. Racism experienced by its cast, particularly Hattie McDaniel, is among the most disturbing aspects of the movie's production and release. Despite their thankless roles in its blockbusting success, McDaniel and her black co-stars were unable to attend Gone with the Wind's premiere in segregation-era Atlanta. Watch your hurry, sister. Let's come over this year, Tom. When McDaniel became the first African-American to win an Oscar, she was seated at the back of the room, separate from her co-stars, and it's been said that the studio wrote her speech. Despite her success in the role of Mammy, McDaniel rarely played anything more substantive than the on-screen servant of a big star. It ain't fitting, it just ain't fitting. It ain't fitting. Number 6. The Birds Suspense maestro Alfred Hitchcock was known for his predilection for icy blondes, but his obsession with Tippi Hedren was something else entirely. I loathe you. You have no manners, you're arrogant and conceited, and 
I wrote you a letter about it, in fact. Having discovered Hedren through a commercial, Hitchcock cast her in The Birds and began to mold her into his object of desire. He also signed her to an exclusive contract that severely limited her opportunities with other directors. Things took a dark turn when she reportedly rejected his romantic overtures, and Hitchcock retaliated by making conditions on the set intolerable for her, even dangerous. There were three boxes, great big cartons of ravens and seagulls, and prop men with their leather gauntlets hurled birds at me for five days. The actress suffered very real cuts when Hitchcock substituted real birds for mechanical ones in the attic finale and tied them to her costume with small elastic cords. Hedren's harrowing story would later be told in HBO's The Girl. Jimmy, you can't drive yourself, honey. It's okay. Whatever she wants. One day. I heard you tell it would only take one day, Jim. Number five, The Conqueror. It's hard to imagine worse casting for Mongol warlord Genghis Khan than the most American actor who ever lived. Yet that's what the innovative thinkers behind this John Wayne-led historical epic tried to put over on an unsuspecting public. I, Temujin, chief of all Mongols, and henceforth ruler over the possessions of Wang Khan, make known to all men present and afar off, those who oppose me shall be destroyed. The movie is maybe more infamous for the large number of its cast and crew, including John Wayne, who died of cancer afterward. Numerous desert locations featured in the film were actually shot near nuclear testing sites. This raid may reap us more grief than spoils, Temujin. True. Aye. Aye. The resulting contamination is said to be the cause of the cancer cases. Producer Howard Hughes was said to have felt so guilty about this possible connection that he kept the film out of circulation for years. Tell us, Mongol, in like circumstance, what punishment would you decree? What else, my wife, but the slow death? Number 4. Noah's Ark This part-silent, part-talky was one of Hollywood's most ambitious productions to date. The movie features an extended sequence depicting the story of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood. Stir in. The deluge was recreated by dumping 600,000 gallons of water onto the dozens of extras. In the chaos, three extras drowned and many more were taken to the hospital. The tragedy wasn't unforeseen. A cameraman named Hal Moore raised flags about the potential dangers of filming the scene with untrained extras, but his worries were ignored. The incident was the primary reason for new regulations involving dangerous stunts. And I further banish from my realm all injustices and oppressions which have burdened my people. Director Michael Curtiz's career wasn't too badly damaged. He would go on to make renowned classics like The Adventures of Robin Hood and Casablanca. No, no. He's looking at you, kid. Number three, Song of the South. Now see that? That old brow patch ain't brought me nothing but trouble. Ow! And more trouble. This one's sure to stay in the vault. Song of the South may be from a different time, but it was controversial even when it was released in 1946. Walt Disney consulted with many different African-American writers and performers in developing his dream project, but largely ignored their concerns about the inherent racism of the story, which depicted former enslaved people as hapless and longing for plantation life. Once released, the movie's politics seemed retrograde even to contemporary critics, although it was far more blatantly lambasted in black publications. Is Grandma mad at us? Well, of course not, Johnny. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, Georgie says everybody's mad. The Disney company has only recently begun erasing the remaining traces of the movie from its theme parks, but the movie itself has been largely ignored for years due to the controversy. But it just goes to show you what comes of mixing up with something you've got no business with in the first place. And don't you never forget it. Number two, Babes in Arms. We gotta work hard and make a lot of dough for our folks. And it'll be fun. Oh, won't it be fun, Mickey? Oh, with both of us in there pitching, it certainly will be. Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney were two of the MGM Studios' biggest stars in the late 1930s and early 1940s. Their first pairing, Babes in Arms, cemented their place as America's it couple. Put her there. Oh, Pat, you're, you're the tops. 
To maintain the frantic and fast-paced shooting schedule, Garland, Rooney, and other stars were prescribed stimulants to keep their energy up and sleeping pills to help them sleep. Although Rooney would later deny many of Garland's claims, he himself was known to struggle with substance use disorder later in life. There's no denying, though, that it was her substance use disorder that ultimately brought about Garland's premature death at the age of 47. I don't see how she survived it for as long as she did. She was a woman of enormous strength. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Wizard of Oz There's no denying that The Wizard of Oz was a nightmare of a production. I'm not afraid of a witch. I'm not afraid of anything. Except a lighted match. I don't blame you for that. Margaret Hamilton, who played the Wicked Witch of the West, was severely burned during a special effects mishap. Actor Buddy Epson had to be replaced when the makeup used to achieve his look as the Tin Man nearly asphyxiated him. On top of the rigorous schedule and dangerous prescription pill regimen, Garland herself was ordered to lose weight before taking the role. No hamburger. Mr. Mayor said very specifically you are not to eat the food. I'm honestly very hungry. She was subjected to the abuse of director Victor Fleming and harassment from many of the actors playing munchkins. Though it may be a shining beacon of classic movie magic, its backstory is a prime example of what can hide behind the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. 